Hey, Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Tuesday here on this program, and yes, I am back for the time being. Not going to lie to everybody. Thankfully, Mike does a great job on those solo simp days because I'm going to be gone Thursday. I'm going to be gone Friday. I'm going to be gone Monday. And then I think after that, everything should be good for the time being. But you never know how things go. But we got a lot to get into here today. While I am here, not the least of which is Raw last night, where we have new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. And man, I got all the emails last night. Oh, Brian, look at how dumb you are. Look at that. Okay, look, fine. I could be dumb. I didn't think there was any chance that Aaliyah and Raquel were going to win the women's tag team titles. Why? Because it doesn't make any sense. But they did. So if you'd like to call me an idiot, hey, it won't be the first time. I ain't going to be the last time. But yes, Raquel and Aaliyah are the new WWE women's tag team champions. So we can tell you about that here on the show today, as well as the rest of the Raw show. And uh, we've also got notes on a lot of former names, including an update on the former Velveteen Dream, Braun Strowman, and others as well, some of which are rumored uh, to have been discussed about coming back to WWE. we got notes on Darby Allin, Having to buy his way out of a previous contract to sign with AEW, his thoughts on NXT at the time. Rampage, SmackDown, ratings, and plenty more. So, a lot to get into here today. And we're going to kick it off after the break, so stick around everybody. Wrestling Observer Live. Live, yes, Mike Sempervivi is joining us here today. Also, WrestlingObserver.com. And i got to start with a quick note for all of the freeloaders out there, you Observer Live freeloaders. This is a radio show, national broadcast radio show. And as a result, we have been airing the show live on Twitch and YouTube every day at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern. And fear not, that is not going to change. So if you're used to watching the show live and free on the radio, Twitch, YouTube, that will continue. But for the last uh, month or two, we have been quietly... Allowing everybody to watch the replay for free on YouTube as well. The entire show, free on YouTube. And just a note to everybody who is watching it in that way, the free month is ending in September. And so if you have been uh, getting used to that, well, I'm afraid it's not going to be available anymore. But we are going to uh, continue to air the show live and free at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern. Clips, of course, will always be available free on YouTube as well. But if you want to watch the replay or listen to the replay, you have to be a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com or Video.F4WOnline.com. And if you subscribe, you don't only get to watch the replay every day, but the video service has three years' worth of video archives. Not Observer Live, but the Brian DeVinny Show, Filthy 4 Daily, Figure 4 Daily with Lance Storm, and the audio site, no joke, 13,000 archived audio shows in the library. Every single solitary show dating back to 2005 is available in the archive. So if you decide one day, I'm going to go back and listen to every single Observer Live starting in 2005, you can. You'll never finish it, but you can try. So anyway, WrestlingObserver.com, Video.F4WOnline.com, or you can watch live and free every day at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, but no more full free shows on, on YouTube. That is, uh, that's ending at the uh, beginning of September, so just thought y'all should know that. And thank y'all to our, uh, our loyal supporters here on Twitch and YouTube as well. All you homies, well, we appreciate you guys. For the most part. Now, we've got a lot to get into here today. Are you guys aware that, uh, that we have new women's tag team champions? 
and it I is Ra- it is Raquel and Dalia. Mm. It's Raquel. You know the funniest thing about Raquel and Aaliyah winning the tag team titles is? What's that? <laughs> besides the fact that I thought there was zero chance, and I think everybody else that has a brain thought there was zero chance. They're doing this match last night. And I don't know what Aaliyah did, but the announcers say, her inexperience is showing. I thought, bro, she's been in the system for nine years. Might be eight years. It's eight or nine years. And she's been wrestling for almost... A decade. But her inexperience was showing. And, you know, Dave on Observer Radio last night says, well, you know, they really want to get over uh, Raquel. I was like, well, why didn't she get the win with her move? Aaliyah got the win. And the only thing I can come up with was they figured that it would surprise everybody. Which it did. I was surprised. But... Let's be honest here. I like to be surprised in ways where it's better or it makes sense or it's leading to something. Here's the deal. Sasha and Naomi are are coming back, okay? And they're really trying to push this women's division hard. And I don't know about the rest of you, but it's I don't just want to see women on TV. That's all fine and good. But you got some really talented women. You've got... I mean, in the finals of the tournament, you had Dakota and the former Io Shirai, for crying out loud. Sasha, whatever you want to say about, you know, whatever issues there are. I mean, she's she's an excellent worker. And, you know, Naomi's been hit or miss, but she's had some really good matches. And she's been around forever. And, and with the right people, she can look good. And you've got uh, Bailey and Alexa and Asuka. And when you look at that, all of those three teams that I just mentioned, you can do quite a well-worked, good promos. You can do some real good stuff for months. But instead, they put the belts on Raquel, who is, in fact, still green, and Aaliyah, who is, in fact, still green after I don't even know how long. Neither of them are, are great promos. Aaliyah's had a few matches of late that have been... Let's be honest. Bad. But this was their idea to surprise us. They surprised us with something where it's like... And then one other thing. Somebody said, well, you know, maybe as a condition of their return, Sasha and Naomi demanded we got to get our belts back immediately. And so they're just going to go in and beat Aaliyah and Raquel. Which, like, if that's the case, I mean, you can do that if you want to. But I mean this in the nicest way possible. Unless you're Marks, you have to understand that Sasha and Naomi coming back and chasing heels for a couple of months to win their titles back is a way better story than them walking in, winning their belts back, and then the heels are chasing them. I know it really doesn't matter all that much. I know there's not money nowadays in a chase, but it's a better story that they're trying to get their belts back that were stripped from them than just walk in, get them, And then, oh, here's all these evil heels trying to take our... I don't know. Who cares? But I was surprised and not in a good way last night. Especially because what are going to be the better matches? (laughs) Sasha and Naomi against Aaliyah and Raquel? Or, honest to God, if if this was a different administration like the last one, I would figure they just did this so you could have Raquel turn around and turn on Aaliyah. I mean, honestly, because that's... Usually what they do with these types of teams that they slap together and they have eyes on one person and not another because maybe they're trying to get what they can get out of Aaliyah, you know, before they start doing cuts or something. Because, again, I she's been there a long time. This is the most they've done with her. I don't know if she has at a level where they... Again, when you start naming names, Charlotte, Bianca, Bailey, Sasha... Where does Leah fit? When you start looking at names that could be coming, your Tiffany Stratton's, your Zoe Starks, people that they really like, like Lash Legend, like Nikita Lyons, 
start going, okay, well, where does Aaliyah, how long is she going to be here? How long can she fit here? What can she contribute? And I hate to, I hate to do that, but I mean, really, that's what I was thinking about her before this. And okay, if you're going to give her a shot, that's fine. I just don't know if this thing is going to work and I don't know if it's going to have the impact that they want it to, but you know what? I don't know their story yet, so I'll wait and see how they decide to let it play out. But I also started to wonder if Zoe Stark and Nikita Lyons were in this thing, how far were they destined to go? Because you have somebody with a little more experience who can do a little bit more like Raquel can, and at least is more comfortable in her position, and you have somebody that probably shouldn't be on the main roster, and that would have been Nikita Lyons. I wonder if they could have been a possible winner to this whole thing, especially because they call up Toxic Attraction. And again, I I don't know, maybe they would have had to beat somebody else in the finals, but I wonder if this was just about putting belts on a team that people didn't expect or they actually had eyes on bringing somebody up and then they, you know, things happened the way they did. Also, a couple of other notes from Raw. We'll do the full report here in a bit, but uh, Matt Riddle is now Matt Riddle again. Austin Theory is now Austin Theory again. And I'd have to go through the roster to see who else lost their first and or last names. But it looks like people are going to start getting their names back if you lost one or the other. Angel Garza. Yeah, Angel Garza will probably be Angel Garza again. And this is a this is a departure from one of Vince's weird things where the reason a lot of people lost their last names is because and Matt Riddle is obviously an exception because he's been there forever, but they want to market you, and they don't want you going to AEW and using whatever. So if your name is Matt Riddle now, they would change your name immediately. Just like Gable Stevenson's brother is he's just some random bloke now. Damon Kemp. Damon Kemp. But uh, And if your first name, even if it was a fake name, if part of the fake name was part of your real name, Austin Theory had to go. I'm actually not sure if Austin's his first name. But anyway, people are getting their names back, which is a positive. Because a man named Theory, it's weird. Back in a moment, Observer Live. So a lot of people have returned with Triple H in charge. And uh, perhaps there will be others, but perhaps not. For example, Patrick Clark, best known as Velveteen Dream in WWE, has been arrested twice since August 20th. According to court records in Orange County, Florida, Clark was arrested August 20th on battery and trespassing charges. August 26th, Orlando Mugshots reported that Clark had been arrested again for possession of drug paraphernalia. An arraignment for the battery and trespassing charges was set for September 28th. That has since been canceled. He has pleaded not guilty to the battery and trespassing charges, has since paid bond for his release. Not sure now would be the best time to consider a return for Velveteen Dream. Say that word again. Paraphernalia. Paraphernalia. Yes. Paraphernalia. It's not paraphernalia. It's no. paraphernalia. No. Learn learn how to enunciate, Mike. Ah, uh, is that? Yes. Would I learn that by going up onto the, the rough? No. You, it'd probably help if you went to classes. Hmm. Yes. Diction classes, I guess? Perhaps, yes. Yes. Mm. You have a poor diction, I have been told. Now, we also have uh, WWE <laughs> reportedly interested in bringing back former Universal Champion Braun Strowman. And there was also apparently discussion of bringing back the former Bronson Reed. Of course, uh, both of them released. And, uh, Here's the deal, everybody. I really like Jonah. I would be thrilled if he came back and smashed dudes on the main roster of WWE. But uh, he's doing well. So we'll see about that one. Plus, I don't know his contract. I presume he very recently signed a deal. As far as uh, as Strowman goes, you know, when they released Braun Strowman, Braun Strowman was not, like, the world's best worker. And he's kind of a knucklehead and everything like that. But... I said, why did we release Braun Strowman? And now we're pushing these big giants like Omos and Commander Aziz and this and that. And, you know, Dave said, and I'm sure that there was probably this mindset, 
how many giants do you need? Once you have once you have Omas, how many other giants do you need? And I said this then, and I'll say it now. Bro, God bless him. God bless the guy. He sucks. He can't have good matches. He cannot go in there and have a 14-minute main event match with anybody. It's going to suck. So whatever you want to say about Braun Strowman, Braun Strowman could work as a monster main eventer. Were his matches great? No, they weren't great. Were they fine? Could you do things with the guy? Could you put him in there with a Seth Rollins? Gonna be? Yes. So you got rid of him for other tall dudes, none of whom could work as well as Braun Strowman. I realize maybe the bar is low whatever, but to me, uh, dude, uh, listen. Well, hey, look, you they can were do younger. whatever you want. They Omos here and there. Win some battle royals or whatever. But Braun what? Strowman was your best working giant that you currently had. Right? But that's not really saying much. And I know exactly, I know what you mean, and I didn't see anything in Omos, and I didn't really see anything much in Aziz, although we had to see what exactly they were going to do there, which was not much. But with whatever you were paying him, with what they were doing at the time, him and Bray Wyatt and some other people, I mean, the the world didn't stop spinning without him. It's just, unfortunately for them, they haven't been able to replace him with anybody else, and he is, I guess, linked with Raquel. He has taken shot after shot at Tony Khan, so we know he's absolutely not going there while he's controlling his narrative. I mean, it does make sense that he could come back. Look, I don't think he should be back for some long stint. I mean, with guys like Cross, Dexter Loomis, although he's a little bit of a different story because you can actually put him in an NXT, and for those people down there, you put him on a house show loop, do stuff with Indy. I mean, that's a, he's like Jimmy Valiant in the Carolinas, I think. That's what Dexter Loomis could be to those people down there. So he's a little bit of a different story, but guys like Cross, guys like Braun, if you want to bring them back and have it be a relatively short stint, you know, and you can do something with them and use their name value to build up some other people that are on the come up. I'm for that. But if he's going to come in and just be Braun Strowman, as we've seen him in the past, I, I think it's fine at first. But but after a while, what do you do here? Well, Again, I don't know what you do, but stuff I, here's, over and over. here's what I know. Here's what I know. Vince loved Giants. I don't know what Triple H thinks about Giants, but you got to have one. Just well, one. here's my point. If you find a giant that can replace Braun Strowman, fine. But they got rid of Braun Strowman, and they're pushing these giants that suck way worse than he did, okay? Now, you guys remember the Ultimate Warrior? Well, the Ultimate Warrior was a guy who Vince decided this guy is going to replace Hulk Hogan. Well, guess what? He couldn't replace Hulk Hogan. The fans weren't done with Hulk Hogan. He wasn't as good as Hulk Hogan. He couldn't have matches like Hulk Hogan. He couldn't do promos like Hulk Hogan. So they ended up going back to Hulk Hogan. If you find somebody to replace Braun Strowman, great. But if you're if they're going to push Giants, hey, if they're hey, you know going to push them, then push at least the most competent one you've got. Not get rid of them and then push a bunch of even more incompetent giants. But that's the thing. It's not just finding one. It's finding somebody and cultivating them. That's the most important thing. Because you can't just luck into anybody. I mean, and I I don't... What did they do with Omas on his ascension when he was learning how to wrestle? What did they do where they thought he was going to be that guy other than just being big i mean you have to find guys like your again what did what did pat McAfee say baron corbin uh, uh was on smackdown six eight and 285 or something like that i don't know how big he actually is or anything but like the barry windoms of the world like the guys who were six eight like those guys are good enough like i don't necessarily need a monster because yes it is nice to have one and I think you should have one, but if you don't have one ready to go or you have to go back to a bunch of retreads like Hulk Hogan was because you didn't cultivate anybody, you know, that's on you. And I don't think as a fan I need to be subjected to where you're going to get brawn because we don't have anybody else. Shankly. <laughs> Commander, He's not Commander, the guy. That was my point. Who's your dancing dude Shankly. down in NXT? Commander Aziz. Omos. And yes, people are making fun of me. Oh, 
Uh, get the least bad. Yes, well, who, get the least the- bad giant. That's what I'm saying. Get the least bad giant. I'm not ashamed to say that. If I have to watch a bad giant, <laughs> I want to watch the least bad giant. But if the least not bad the worst giant, giant you have is is giant Silva. If it's if it's great Kali, do we have to deal with this again? If we get Big Show, that's cool. But like, if we get Kali, do we? No. No, yes, I agree, Big everybody. Viscera? You want Viscera back, Brian? Is that what you're saying? The, this this person notes Sanga. Yes, I love Sanga. <laughs> okay, but Sanga still got a ways to go in the ring, and I'm not sure exactly. A long ways. I don't know how tall he really is, but man, let me tell you something. Sanga, personality wise, blows away every other giant that they've got by miles and miles. Work wise, it's funny if you watch him work. He literally is being trained, like, the work, the look, the gear, to be Braun Strowman. But he's not there yet in the ring. So get Braun Strowman, have him be your giant that you have to have everyone beat on the way to a championship match, or whatever you're going to do, because Triple H did learn from Vince. And then when Song is ready, he can come up and be your awesome giant. You know, sometimes you don't need to have, even though it might be great for a few people, that technical wrestling match. Sometimes you don't have to have that woman's match on the card just to put one on there. And sometimes you don't have to have that Davy versus Goliath type of situation or that gigantic horror film type of situation with this monster coming to crush, kill, and destroy. Sometimes your monsters can be semi-normal human beings like the Brock Lesnar's and people like that of the world. I was talking about Morrissey. Yeah, Morrissey's a tall guy. Morrissey is is turned into a, a pretty decent a worker. He, he's a, he's a Wyndham. He's well, a, he's a the more issue. Of a personality. The issue to me is it actually is not a personality. He was a personality with Enzo. With, you're, Without you're right. Enzo, he's just a tall guy. <laughs> he insulted Daniel Bryan. I mean, <laughs> you can say whatever you want about about Strowman, but even his his gimmick of a big dummy, which was his storyline gimmick for a while, especially when he feuded with Shane. I mean, that was something. I mean, you could watch him and be entertained by the segment. And you know way what more they could say for with, Omos. Well, with all of this talk, too, it doesn't really matter because I think for that WWE fan base, if he does come back again, at least short term, it's absolutely going to work. In him, I would almost guaranteed be surely be put into a situation where he's going to be throwing people through things if he returns and just completely tearing stuff up to mark his presence again in WWE. So short term, at least it's going to work out just fine. Long term. We'll see. Darby Allen says he had to pay $12,000 to get out of a contract with another company before he could sign with AEW. He said at the time I was signed with another little promotion. The moment I heard Cody was interested, long story short, I paid $12,000 to get out my contract. I took a loan out, and I remember I used to hit Cody up every day. Just blow his phone up. I just heard there was a new company starting, and this is before TV was even talked about. I was like, this is crazy. All I heard when they were promoting it was the word creative freedom, and I was like, that's where I need to be. He also received interest from NXT at the time. But he knew he wanted to go to AEW. At the time, I was kind of being groomed to go to NXT, and I saw the writing on the wall. This was back when 205 Live was a thing, if you remember 205 Live. And I was like, he said some naughty words. I'm not going there to do that. It was a feeling I had that I had to go to AEW. I was just so drawn to it. And uh, that's the story of him going to AEW. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. I like this show for the most part, and although, uh... What, this one? This Raw show. Oh, but you meant this show. It's hit or miss on this one. Uh, Should have heard yesterday's. Yeah. I imagine. (laughs) Finn Balor and Damian Priest beat AJ Styles and Dolph Ziggler in the opener. They got eight minutes, and the heels got the win pinning old Dolph Ziggler. And then Edge showed up, and Edge came down to the ring, and he gets in the ring by himself. And uh, let me tell you, it's been great lately. Let me tell you, it's benefited from no more of this insanity. Who? Damian Priest. Mm -hmm. Bro, this guy's promos have been great. And he cut a great promo on Edge last night, talking about how he would have won last week. But you had your family, you had your friends. Well, they aren't here right now. Why don't you get in the ring, and we'll, uh, we'll show you your judgment day. So, of course, he gets in the ring, 
And then uh, out comes Rey Mysterio and Dominic, and they, they're beating up all of the heels, and everyone ends up outside except Dominic and Rhea Ripley. Rhea's been beating up old Dominic. Well, Dominic's, uh, you know, she begs him to whack her with this stick, and he won't do it. And she finally coerces him to give her the stick. And then the, he, the baby face hit the ring, and now she's got the stick, and she fends him off, and then she's pulled outside. So it looks like Dominic is smitten with Rhea Ripley. And uh, they've been doing this uh, storyline here for a while, but let's say it again. I think Sunday, Sunday's the day, because Ray and Edge are facing the Judgment Day, and Dominic's all upset that Ray didn't choose his own son. And Ray tells him Edge is like family. And Edge is the guy that speared him. Boss man. Yes. I hate to interrupt you during one of your Raw reviews, but I got to ask you, being a guy that, you know, hey, yeah, yeah, you're from Mexican descent, just like Dominic Mysterio. Did you ever have a haircut like that? And don't tell me no. Don't tell me no, because I found the picture. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I did. Why don't you, I did. Show, why don't you show me this Jared, picture? Can you, Jared, can you put that up right now, please? What's up with this guy's eyes? What? What is that? <laughs> That's you. That was you in 1987. Middle school, Brian Alvarez right there. It's maybe the early 90s. Bro, <laughs> I, I, never, I never had a haircut quite like that. Waterfall in the back like that? Nah, I never that really That thing had... is amazing because I... that's like, it looks like it could grow into a high top fade. I mean, look at that. <laughs> I sort of I sorta had a mullet back in the day, but nothing nothing like old Dominic. I had the reverse mullet. That was that was a really popular one. I I, I buzzed my head except for uh, the front, which went down to here, and I, I brought it all back. <laughs> Bro, I went to prom with that thing. Yeah. <laughs> who was your but, now when you started wrestling? Who had the fluffiest best? Because you're close to Canada, and there's some fluffy n- ones up there. Well, I mean, you know, who always I always was uh, just amazed by the honky tonk man because he used to work all these shows for Tim. And the Honky Tonk Man had this, he had his same pompadour, you know, which was less of a pompadour than when he was younger, but he still had the same pompadour. But for some reason, he'd grown out the back, like halfway down his back, and then he braided it. I'm like, whatever, bro. <laughs> That's well, he want. had a ponytail. He had that long tail for a while there, Honky did. So uh, a whole bunch of money spent trying to uh, take the gray out of that. I'll talk I'll talk more about Elvis tonight on the Brian and Vinny, Granny and Craig show, because I, I got a story, believe it or not. But anyway, that haircut everyone's making fun of, bro, don't get me wrong, it sucks, okay? But it's clearly, clearly a tribute to Eddie Guerrero. Because Please Eddie, stop saying Art Bar, Eddie everybody. Guerrero stop had Art that, Bar. That same <laughs> atrocious haircut. It was part of his gimmick. <laughs> but that's clearly what Dom is doing here. Anyway, then we had uh, Bianca, Asuka, and Alexa versus Kayla Sparks, Danny Moe, and Katie Arquette. An enhancement match in the first hour of Raw with the women. And, of course, they beat him in three minutes. And then uh, they cut a promo hyping up the six women at the Clash at the Castle. So Miz has been freed. Dexter Loomis kidnapped him last week, but Miz is now free. Why? What happened? Well, the the way they're they're explaining this is Miz won't talk about it. So we we don't know. But Miz has explained that uh, that he's free, and he doesn't want to talk about it. And then later Pierce goes, "We well, you know uh, Dexter's now free as well, because you don't want to talk about it." which means you wouldn't press charges. So that's their explanation. And then throughout the show, Miz sees Dexter everywhere, but then the camera pans back and Dexter's not there. So last night I was flipping my lid about, oh, God, hate this hocus pocus, this warrior in the mirror and everything like that. I've had a day to think about it. I've talked to some other people. I I will go along with it for now because this has always been my rule and my rule is, it's not hocus pocus if what happens is possible. And if the story is that this Dexter is sneaking in and sneaking out, and he is supposed to be there, 
And it's not a story where Miz sees him, but nobody else does. But we see him like Warrior in the Mirror, so we're also crazy. The guy's there. He's just very good at sneaking. I'll accept it for now. But this I'm not a... thrilled. I'm not thrilled, don't get me wrong. But at this Did point, you... they aren't booking it like it's magic. Well, Kevin Owens and Ezekiel? I mean, I mean, it's... everybody else is, uh, you know, only Kevin Owens is crazy or <laughs> however that played. Kind of the same same vibe there. And look, it's, it's pro wrestling. So I will give them a wide berth here. But uh, yeah, the, I, can't, I would rather see him down in NXT. That whole act down there and kind of get this thing over with. We had a Kurt Angle segment. This is one change we've got from Vince. They respect the legends. How about it? So Angle comes out. He does a promo. Gable comes out. He makes fun of Pittsburgh. Says he wants to induct a Kurt Angle into their group. He's got a jacket for him. Kurt Angle says, bro, I ain't doing it. So they threaten to beat him up. But out comes the uh, Street Profits. And they do a long talking segment, which leads to the Street Profits versus Alpha Academy with a stipulation. It's not just a nothing happening match. If the Street Profits beat Alpha Academy, Kurt Angle has whatever freedom he has. But if the Alpha Academy wins, Kurt must join the Alpha Academy and he must uh, he must be their slave, for lack of a better term. He has to do everything they want him to do. So there's at least a stipulation here. They go 16 minutes. The last few minutes of this match were great. And finally, Ford hits the big frog splash. And so Kurt Angle does not have to be a slave. He gets his milk. They all drink milk together. They all celebrate. Everybody in Pittsburgh is happy. As happy as this crowd's going to be. This was not a great crowd at all. They were quiet all night. Which is funny, because all I had to hear was, oh, they do so much crowd sweetening. It's all fake. Well, bro, where was the crowd sweetening? Because you can only do so much. They tried, but this crowd was dead. And it came across as dead on television. And that's... There's no magic here, everybody. You know what sweetening means? You get a little salt and you put it on your steak. Okay? Do you guys know what salt is? You know what, I do. You know what steak is, right? Yeah. Okay. So you got a steak, and the steak tastes whatever. You want it to taste a little better. Well, you put some salt on it. Okay, you know what happens if you have a plate that's empty and you just pour like a whole bunch of salt on the plate? Steak doesn't appear. <laughs> right? You're right. You're absolutely right. You so yeah, they, they do definitely luck. sweeten the crowd. But like, if the crowd's dead, no amount of sweetening is going to convince you that they're alive. Now, we had a Riddle Seth Rollins sit down interview. Hosted by Corey Graves. They'd had a, they'd had a, uh, a kerfluffle earlier in the afternoon. And uh, they have this, they have a normal WWE back and forth or whatever. And at the end of it, you know, Seth is laughing. He's got a stupid outfit on. Riddle's doing his, his gimmick. I know it's kerfuffle, but I, I don't want to say that. I want to say kerfluffle. So deal with it. So they, they do the deal. And then uh, Seth is just being, you know, the Riddle or whatever. And then at the very end, Riddle makes a comment about how there is one man in your household, only one. It's Becky. Which is not that insulting. But man, Riddles, he's gotten under Seth's skin. So the segment ends. They go to commercial. They come back commercial, and the announcers say, man, the, the, you know, they were still mic'd up. Wait till you see what happened after the interview is over. So what they did was, Seth, after the break, goes, man, you still there? We have to talk about my family for you. Want to talk about family? Want to talk about your family? We talk about your wife. Oh, we can't. She divorced you and took the kids because they don't want to hang around with a blank. And now Riddle's furious. I'm gonna blank you up. They got the bleep and everything like that. They're good. They're going hardcore. You would never see this with Vince in charge. It was total shoot style. Uh, swearing back and forth fury when this was over it was like this match is hot i thought this was great probably the best thing on the entire show so they storm off set lashley beat the miz Eh, it's the miz miz looks up oh it's the wall brother it's dexter gets distracted hurt lock submitted everybody else looks up now he's he's snuck away i'm not a fan of this angle personally 
had some uh, comedy with Edge and Angle dating back to like 2001. <laughs> Angle's referencing, you're not going to get me with this again. But they don't explain what it is. So like, if you're under the age of 35, you're like, what's this geek talking about? No idea. But hey, thankfully, hey, most people think- are over the age of 45 watching this show. You think maybe Dexter just says to hell with it, and instead of going after the Miz, he just kidnaps Champa and takes him back to Gargano, and they kick open the door of Gargano's house, and there's Indy, and, and there's Gargano, there's everybody, and it's it's a nice. Bro, happy I got family so again. much more to recap here, and it's fantasy booking for the way. God help me, the Usos and Sami Zayn have a segment. This segment was great. If you don't watch Raw SmackDown. I don't know what to tell you, but if you do, this segment was great because they've been doing, they have literally been doing long-term storytelling with Sami Zayn, the Usos, and Kevin Owens. And it is, in fact, going week to week. It is continuing along. There's no start and stop. Sammy, and a man, I could talk about this forever, we don't have time, but Sammy wants to be Roman's friend. Roman is clearly using Sammy. Sammy gets along with with, uh, Jimmy, but not Jay. Kevin Owens comes out. Sammy is longtime friends with Kevin Owens, but he's being used by Roman. And so he is representing Roman against Kevin Owens, which makes Kevin Owens angry. So they got this whole thing. Everybody is great. The Usos are great. Sammy is great. Kevin Owens is great. And, you know, this all plays in the Clash of the Castle because Kevin Owens is talking about how he wants to face Roman Reigns for the title, which I think could be a red herring. And Drew might, I, I would put the title on Drew. And then everyone's like, well, what do you do with, with Kevin if, if Roman's not the champion? Kevin and Sammy is baby faces against the Usos. Thank you. It's Jesus perfect. Christmas. My God. How, why is this so difficult for people? But Kevin Owens then beat Jey Uso and... The Usos want Sammy to hit Kevin with a chair, but he just can't bring himself to do it. And so Jay ends up beaten. They're yelling at Sammy. You want Sammy to turn. I think this is the one of the best storylines they've got going right now. And then uh, the main event, as we'll skip ahead. Yes, Raquel and Aaliyah beat Dakota and Io. Yes, Dakota was not legal. No, I don't think they're going to undo the match, but I do think this will play into rematches. And that was the end of the show. I was I was baffled, and not in a good way. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Um, hey, I want to mention in one hour, 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern, myself and Lance Storm will be doing our monthly live Q&A. What does that mean? Well, if you are a video subscriber, video.f4wonline.com or twitch.tv slash f4wvideo, you can watch the show live In an hour, 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern. And you can put questions into that chat box right there. I ask Lance. Lance answers. You can do follow-up questions. But uh, anybody who is a video subscriber on the live tier can ask questions. So that's coming up in one hour, 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern today. And uh, if you do not have a video subscription, but you do have Amazon Prime, you actually have a video subscription. You can go to twitch.tv slash F4W video. You go down there to hit the subscribe button, and then you scroll down and there's an option. Use your Amazon Prime account. Did you know this? And you uh, link Twitch to your Amazon account, and every month you get a free Twitch subscription. So every month you renew using your Amazon Prime. Costs you zero, and you can watch these shows live and commercial free. And you can ask questions to Lance. So link up your Amazon account, twitch.tv slash F4W video, and then join us today, 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern, for the Lance Storm live Q&A. Enjoy it, everybody. Next week, I'll be hosting that when Brian is unable to speak when he gets choked out by filthy Tom Waller coming up Do you this know anything about anything? Black Label Pro. Number one, if he choked me out, of course I could still speak. Not when he and number two, your voice box. he ain't going to choke me out. No chance. Do you hear me? No. Less chance than Aaliyah and Raquel winning those women tag team titles. Say no chance in hell. We know what happened to the last guy that said That's that. That's why I didn't say it. Talk to you again next time. Wrestling Observer Live.